getting started right now. So, uh, welcome to lecture two of scattering amplitudes. So, oh, absolutely, please, yeah. Mm -hmm. lines. We were reading from yep. So like, uh, where is the line? Uh, in what way is it like a diagram? And is it like a diagram? So, so it's, so the way we're going to, good. So, so, so what we're not going to do is derive Feynman rules from an action and then start hammering those off-shelf Feynman rules together to dress graphs like that. Okay. But we're still going to end up with organization of our, of our predictions, of our scattering amplitudes, in terms of graphs just like that. But we're going to rise at how we dress that graph in a different way than hammering together off-shelf Feynman rules. OK? Is that any, any more questions about? More. Yeah, please. I, I also I don't think I fully appreciated what you meant by weights yesterday. Oh, good. Good. So, so one of the things we'll be doing today is actually building some of these dressings or weights or mappings. And I'm going to use those words interchangeably. But the idea is if I've got some dictionary, right, that says that something like this, something like, you know, some, something, a, a label topology can give me a, um, a color weight. That's an FABC, and um, I don't know, kinematic weight. That let's say, this is, you know, KA, KV, KC. That'll be something like, this is some kinematic weight of this graph is going to be something like, I don't know, KA minus KB dot some polarization vector associated with C, right? And there's no, so this is, these, this is on shell. So everything, everything we see is external. This isn't a Feynman rule. This is, an, this is a graph contributing to an amplitude, a three-point amplitude. Everything's on shell, right? So we don't have any internal propagators. So you know my propagator structure for this graph is just going to be one. So I have no propagators at three-point tree level, OK? And so these, these are mappings for something that's labeled like this, OK? So now, if I hand you something that's one, two, three, right, then you know how to dress it, right? You know how to map something that looks like this. Oh, you can say, oh, I'm, a, you know, I'm not so sure. I'm not so sure about which one should be one or two, right? Should my A be one or should my A be two? Fortunately, the only things that care are absolutely antisymmetric in exactly the same way. So it doesn't matter. So this satisfies the properties of the types of weights okay, that, that, that were. And so, so what do I mean by a weight or a dressing? I mean having a dictionary that lets me take something canonically labeled to expressions. And then when somebody hands me a particular instance of something, because you, maybe, maybe you know, um, people, for those of you who have done even tree level calculations, even four point, four point tree level, four point tree level, all the cubic graphs, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, and one, two, three, four. All these three cubic graphs, these are the only three cubic graphs that contribute to four point. They're all exactly the same topology, right? They're all, you know, this topology, A, B, C, D, OK? So if I have a way of mapping this to its contributions to an amplitude, then I can go to this guy and this guy and this guy and just say what they give me, right? I don't have to separately apply rules to this, apply rules to this, and apply rules to this. I have some canonical something, right, and some mapping that gives me expressions. Okay. Furthermore, if I can relate 
these graphs, right? I mean, if I can relate these graphs to each other, that places constraints on this, right? Which drastically, re and these are the types of constraints we'll be using to build up predictions for all sorts of theories, okay? Uh, may, hopefully, hopefully that was a clarifying, clarifying example. So I'll just leave that there for now. Yes? Great. So you just, you, you're asking about these guys, and you're saying that these are related by crossing symmetry for Feynman rules. By, 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 absolutely. How, how does that, re, maybe, maybe we can wait until I actually start talking about four points more uh, completely before we, we talk about relations between these guys. Is that okay? All right. But if I don't answer your question, Definitely ask it again. Any more questions on just, just this to clarify? Now, you can say, oh, what's, <laughs> what's the advantage? <laughs> All right? So it sure looks like a whole bunch of graphs, right? I might as well just give my computer the, the basic building blocks I derive from my, from, my, uh, from my action, for the theory I want, and just let it churn and I can go be doing real physics while my computer's calculating, right? The, the thing is, these things, okay, so this, oh, here, let, let, just, just so we're all on the same page. What type of particles are these? And, 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 and this isn't a trick question, but, but maybe you don't know. If you don't know, you can always look at the contribution to a scattering amplitude and figure out what type of particles are being scattered because of little group scaling. Has, do people know about little group scaling? Okay, so I'm, I'm seeing a lot, of, a lot of shaking heads. I'm not, so there's, little group scaling is rich. It's the set of Lorentz transformations that leave, um, leave momentum invariance uh, invariant, okay? So, so you can think if I've got something, if I've got, if I've got um, a momentum pointing in Z, I can consider like rotations around Z and it's never gonna, it's never gonna affect that guy, right? Um, I'm, not gonna, I'm not gonna go into it other than to say that polarizations, polarizations encode spin one, okay? Spinner bilinears, each spinner bilinear encodes a spin one half for that bilinear. Okay, so just looking at this, we know that this guy's a vector. I mean, forget how I drew it. I drew it with a wiggly line. That was kind of a hint. But looking at this, this guy's a vector. These guys, this is just raw momenta, right? And there's no spinner bilinear. There's no polarization for it. So if this is a valid scattering amplitude, these guys have to be scalars, right? They've got no polarization, no external stuff telling them what their spin should be, okay? Um, good. Why did I bring that up? Uh, I'm sure there was a, was there, was I answering a question or did I just start talking? <laughs> um, <I'm, laughs> so, so um, oh, I'm sure there was a question. For the life of me, I've, I've forgotten. Yes, yeah, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. So little group scaling, little group scaling lets you probe an amplitude to see which, what, what little group, you know, I'm sorry, what, what Wigner, Wigner classification the particles are. Um, good, yeah. Also, haven't really defined how we should draw the lines. So, like, shouldn't are we just allowed to like to are we free to invent kind of lines? Like, are, for example, how also like how for example you have like these three scalars to like how, how do we draw the lines? 
So, so I'm going to repeat back your question to you. And the question you're asking me is, what are the rules? And that's, that's what this, today's lecture is going to be about. Today's lecture is going to be about some of the rules so that we can talk about the type of particles we care about talking about, um, the types of situations we care about talking about, OK? Um, good. All right. Um, Can I go back? Are you asking, can I go back from scattering amplitudes and rebuild an action that can reconstruct it? Yes, you absolutely can. Let me give you, let me give you the worst possible way of, of doing so just, so, you, just so you believe me, and then I'll go on with my lecture. Okay? And then we can talk maybe offline about more elegant ways of doing so. Okay? The worst possible way is to give your action and ansatz for operators, right? For all the different types of interactions, write down the Feynman rules, and then see which combination of those parameters lands you on the theory you thought you were talking about. OK? That's the worst possible way. But it works, right? And so, so, so for, we're going to build things that are, by definition, local. Right? So they're going to have local interactions. Right? So that limits the number of things you get to write down. But it could still be a mess. Right? And so, so, so there are better ways. But, but, but what, what I'm, what I'm going to be focusing on right now is, is how we can actually go directly from sort of symmetries and principles to predictions. And then we can talk about repackaging it into, into like classical effective actions if we want, or even start writing down quantum effective actions, all sorts of fun games. OK? All right. Good. All right. So so this is really going to be about some rules and some building blocks. And, and the, the point I'm going to emphasize is that, that, um, that's, that, that so many things that we regard as fundamentally different and distinct. We can make predictions for theories involving these things using, many, using almost identical building blocks with just small tweaks. At the end. And in fact, it's very possible to go from predictions in one theory to predictions in other theories by making small changes, small reasoned changes to how you wrote down the predictions in one theory to get the predictions in the other theory. Um, OK, and so probably, probably uh, the, the most important, the most important uh, one is, 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 is just what, what internal propagators are you going to get dressed with, OK? And whether internal propagators are fermions or scalars or gravitini, or gravitons, or some massive, you know, care black hole. We can dress the propagators the same way. And the only distinction we're going to make is whether things are massive or massless. OK? And so for internal propagators, All right, so if there's some, some momentum running through, let's call it L. All OK? And then if you want a plus or minus i epsilon that I'll never write down, ever. OK? So I'm just going to erase it right now. You can always put in your i epsilons later. OK? 
Um, and this m goes to zero when you're talking about massless stuff. OK? And it's the m of your particle when it's massive stuff. And that's it. Those are the only rules for internal propagation. I'm neglecting the types of things that, that are, are sort of standard from, I guess, a Feynman diagram perspective, like conservation of color, right? So whatever color would come in here would come out here, or conservation of flavor in the absence of some sort of flavor changing interaction, right? Whatever flavor is going in here is coming out there. Yep. Good. So, so um, we'll, you'll trace you'll trace Dirac structure through through your graphs for for Dirac fermions. You'll trace your graph structure through the graphs. Um, yeah. All right. Um, what about external stuff? What are the rules of the game for external lines? Well, we already saw, we already saw one for vectors, right? So, so for spin one for vectors, spin one gets a polarization. Why does spin one get a polarization? We have to know how it's full. So, how many how many physical how many physical degrees of freedom do massless vectors have? Two. Okay, so everybody knows that. I mean, everybody, at least many people in the room, were able to quote that, right? So, two physical degrees of freedom. How many, you know? So, when I write something like this, it looks like I've got four, right? So, I've got I need something. I need something to project away. Anything that's unphysical that, that lets me make sure I'm talking about actual physical stuff that I could measure when it's on the outside, right? And that's what polarizations do for a living. Okay, um, so so for vectors, massless vectors, right? We'll have polarizations. And what do these polarizations do? So functionally, when I'm talking about formal polarizations where I'm not even specifying a state, I'm not, I'm not so, so that's a nice thing about formal polarizations, right? So right here, I didn't, tell, I didn't have to tell you whether this is like a plus felicity or minus felicity gluon, right? And here we have, you know, we don't even know what dimensions I'm in, right? Um, so, so I can have formal polarization Right, but I, but it satisfies rules, and the rules it satisfies is that it Lorentz dots with the momentum for that external line to zero. Okay, uh, and that's the rule, I and mean, that's that's what these guys do for a living. Okay, um, they're completeness relations that we'll talk about when we talk about state sums in a little bit. But I'm not going to write it down right now because it's just going to be a distraction. Right? It'll just be a formula that we're not going to be using for a little while. So I'll bring it back up when it matters. So we can, we can treat our gluons you know, or our photons completely d-dimensionally and sum over a state. So when you're in four dimensions, it's going to be either you know, plus solicity or minus solicity. Right? And well, I'll talk about that when I come to state sums. For now, this is all you need to know, is that so that every external vector per term, OK? So in every term we write down in our ansatz for kinematic weights, we'll always have at least one, well, only one for that external guy. OK? Any questions about this? All right. 
Um, what about fermions? Okay, so uh, so fermions also need their little group scaling, right? And they also need something that lets that behaves fermionically in your amplitude, right? And so so what what I'm going to do, right? So fermions they're always in pairs. Right, so I can't write down a diagram with an external fermion without another external fermion, and there'll be some fermion line tracing throughout, right? As I said before, I use an all outgoing convention, right? So, so I'll dress with the solutions to Dirac's equations for all outgoing, right? And so, um, so. Maybe this is maybe this is gonna be readable. So I'll use something like I don't know U S for outgoing spin half, and I don't know for outgoing anti something like that, right? What are what are these what are these U's and these V's? Spinners? Basis for Fermions. So they solve so they solve Dirac's equation. Good. Um, all right. What about scalars? Nothing. Nothing for scalars. Complex scalars on the outside. Nothing. All right. Um, yeah. Considering uh, arbitrary kind of Lorentz structures, are we not considering derivative kind of terms? Well? Oh, we are considering derivative terms, but we are going to work with momenta. Okay. So and so, what the derivatives look like when we work with momenta? Yeah. They look like momenta. Yeah. So, 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 so that was a very good question. I didn't mean to be dismissive. That's a that's a great question. So, so I I haven't. I mean, so the so when I'm talking about propagators, I'm really I'm even just talking about sort of free stuff. Like external, I'm just so I haven't done anything with kinematics yet, right? We'll start doing things with kinematics as soon as we get to interactions, which is three points. All right. So, so I'm gonna I'm gonna get right there. Um, yeah, so everything that you're used to writing down with derivatives in the action, it's just going to be sprinklings of Ks or Ps or Qs or whatever, whatever you like to call your momenta with inside the amplitude. All right? And so, so the art, if you want to write down higher derivative uh, effective operators, is how to sprinkle these Ks and these Ps and these without messing up the symmetries for the, for the, effective, the effective field theory you're trying to write down. Some complication or information, so no information is lost compared to Feynman rules. We will not we will not throw away any information from Feynman rules. Um, what we will see is we will see the emergence of structure that we don't yet understand at the level of actions. And so, color kinematics duality is a is a is a spectacular example where where when you allow yourself the freedom to move stuff around um, while keeping your predictions invariant, you can find representations that demonstrate that all sorts of theories are built out of the same building blocks. And this is not yet understood at the level of actions. You can sort of understand it term by term a little bit. But, but, but so that's some place we're going. So if, if um, yeah. But, but let, let me make it clear that the whole, the whole point of this is to, uh, is, to, is to not throw away 
physical information that's contained in Feynman rules, but not get do bogged down in off-shell gauge dependence that must cancel in any physically invariant prediction. Okay, and so there's a reason. There's a reason why the graviton, the three gra. So, if you want, all right, you're going to do a perturbative calculation uh, for 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 um, for a perihelion shift to Mercury, right? You need you need the self interaction of gravity. That's a three term. That's 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 this. Three gravitons, right? With standard gauges, this guy has over 100 terms, like 171 terms off shell. But you'll see by the end of this lecture that it's much, much, much simpler on shell and intimately related to the three gluon interaction. All right, does that answer? Maybe the question, I don't know. So, so when you're worried, when you're worried that, that maybe we're throwing away information that's somehow contained in Feynman rules, bring it up. So, oh, you know, and then we'll see, we'll see if, if we're actually losing anything or not, okay? All right. Um, good. Oh, well, since I mentioned, since I mentioned gravitons, so. Higher integer spin so higher sp higher integer spin polarizations factorize so gravitons the spin two right you need a polarization tensor for a graviton right. And you can write it as a symmetrization of spin one polarizations. Question? Great. That's an excellent question. I'll, I'd said integer, right? <laughs> yeah. So I'll, I'll get, I'll get, I'll get to fermions. With, I just, I want to make sure that that people appreciate this. Okay. And this goes on on and on and on for as high integer spin as you want. Um, good. What about higher half integer spin? And, and like a gravitini, like a spin three halves. And it turns out you can capture all the integer bits with uh, polarizations, with spin one polarizations, with a string of spin one polarizations, right? Up to the integer bounding from below, right? And then then your uh, then your spinner, accounting for the spin half. So specifically for spin three halves, right? You can get that with uh, spin one polarization. So let's label the particle so we're we're sure we're all talking about the same particle, and. Uh, and a spinner, right? And so, but I'll need, I'll need to close this off somewhere else because it's fermionic, right? Good. Yeah, and this is this is just at the level, this is just at the level of of the wave functions of satisfying the classical equations of free, free classical free equations of motion. Um, but the little group scaling works out, which is all we can care about at this stage, and so. Then we'll go on to interactions. All right. Now, 
Um, yeah. I have a weird habit of starting from the most complicated thing because I get the most I get I get so excited by the complicated things. The complicated thing teaches me something. But it turns out Sometimes it's also good to start from the simple thing. So let's start simple. Three-point interactions with scalars, OK? And then we'll build up to gluons. And then once we have gluons, we'll have everything we could possibly want. All right? So um, so I'm going to have three scalars interacting. All right. Now, this is a three-point scattering amplitude. All right. So these guys are all going to be on shell. Let's talk about a massless. Let's talk about a massless Massless scalar first. All right. All these guys are zero. And momentum's conserved. Are there any non-vanishing Lorentz invariance I can write down. Hmm? So, so what I'm looking, what I'm looking to do is I'm looking to to just write down some sort of scalar, scalar three, you know, some three-point amplitude for some scalars interacting. Okay, and what I'm asking is what building blocks can I use? Dot product. Okay, so let's let's consider what K A dot K B is. Okay. Well, what? It's zero. Why is it zero? It is absolutely zero, okay? And in fact, all the all the Lorentz invariance between, yeah, and I don't have any polarizations to play with. I don't have any spinner bilinears to play with. I'm out of Lorentz invariance, okay? Do we know? Do we know any? Do we know any scalar theories of the cubic interaction? Phi cubed. And so what's its scattering amplitude for the three point? One, right? So I can always, so, so what can I do? What can I do that's not absolutely boring? I could have, I could have, um, you know, so I could have the scattering amplitude be, you know, proportional to some coupling constant, right? So I'm, I'm I can have my scattering amplitude be a number. That's fine. Turns out there's something I can do that's sneaky, that's interesting. I can have it be um, I can give it two copies of an anti-symmetric structure constant where it's a different gauge group. Or it could be this. It doesn't matter if it's the same gauge group or a different gauge group. But it could be charged under two different gauge groups. So this is something that's non-vanishing that I can write down. OK? Yep. Is that just with the anti-wave radiant constant, though? 
well, but it's a very interesting set of constants. <laughs> no, so so, but they, I mean, this can be this can be arbitrary, arbitrarily complicated, right? So so so, um, in essence, well, so yeah, these are numbers, right? But these now have charges, and these charges do interesting things. Yeah. Exactly, right? So yeah. So <laughs> what if? So do you guys do you guys know about symmetric? Oh, do you guys? I sorry. How comfortable are you with FABCs? Let me just. I'm sorry. I, I think I ran into this. I think I ran into this yesterday. So, so. Right. So for any representation of my gauge group, right, they speak to each other via the structure constants. Right? What do the structure constants do for a living? They're anti-symmetric and they satisfy Jacobi. OK? Um, yeah. So maybe, so when there are special properties you can have when you take these, this to be, you know, SUN or UN, right? These, these, uh, these generators to be a particular type of gauge group, right? Um, then, then I can give you, I can give you various formulas. So you can go into a trace basis and play games in a trace basis. But I'm not going to need you to know any of that or do any of that. But what I do need you to do is to really think about these FABCs as um, as anti-symmetric. So for SUN, you could write it as something like right, making the making it, the anti-symmetry manifest inside a trace. But but I don't need you. To, I just need you to remember anti-symmetric and Jacobi. Um, I could also, by the way, I could also write down something symmetric. I could write down a DABC if I wanted. Something that's, that doesn't change as I start flipping my A's, my B's, and my C's around. This, this, uh, this could be interesting, right? Um, I, don't have, I don't have a ton of uses for three-point DABCs. So I, I, can't, I can't go into why that would be interesting now. But, but this is interesting. Yeah. Ah, uh, well, for three points. So, so DABCs are incredibly useful, right? Um, and they're useful all over the place. But, but I haven't constructed something from a scalar DABCs, three-point interactions. That's interesting. That's any more interesting than a phi cubed. Um, OK? Uh, and, and, and with this, so it's either just some, some number, a constant, right? Or I can do something like this. If you find something else that's interesting to do, oh, OK. Now, if I let myself start breaking Lorentz invariance, right, and I start allowing like energies to show up, then I can do more interesting things functionally here, right? But but bar if I'm if I'm staying Lorentz invariant, I'm done. Okay. All right. Um, maybe I'll come over here. So. OK, good. All right, so should we, move, should we move on to vectors? OK, so, uh, oh, I, I jumped. All right. 
Can I have three vectors in three? Ugh. Fermions. Fermions. Three fermions. Oh, well, let me, before I come to this, let me, let me just finish off here for a second. How much does this change if I let everybody have the same mass? How much does this, this story change if I let everybody have the same mass? Not at all. It's just, just a number, right? So now I've got my k squared as being a mass, right? So it's still just a number. I don't have anything more functional to play with. All right, good. Now, um, can I have three fermions? No, OK. So, so let's have two fermions and a scalar. What can I write down with my rules? Kinematically. Yeah, got to write some bilinear, right? So, so what's it going to be? All right? Is there anything? Is there room to put in a gamma in here? No, because I have nothing I can interact with. Hmm? So, so I'm gonna I'm gonna keep this a, 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 like an on a scalar, okay. yeah, um, and and an on shell. Okay, good. So now I can I can choose to uh, I can choose to charge these guys in gauge group if I want. Like I can make all of them. Um, Right, I could, but but what? So 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 yeah. So what what type of what type of color factors can I give for something like this? So think think you think you color. Sure. I mean, so so um, something that cancels between the two fermions. Uh, so, um, like like what? what? What are you thinking? <laughs> so 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 have 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 any have any of you played with sort of scalar QED when when you were when you were younger? So, what type of what type of interactions would you have? For, all right, I'm going to give this as a, I'm going to give this as homework. Okay, so come up with scalar QED. Okay, and 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 see how you can see how you can write down something like this in a framework of something that's encoding. Um, sorry, not scalar. QED. Uh, like Yukawa interaction. I want I want a Yukawa interaction. Okay. Right. So and that and so so the thing is, so I don't need to have colors, right? And so I don't have to have colors, right? Maybe I have a flavor that I care about that I'm tracking here with deltas, right? But that's pretty much it. There's not there's not a lot of freedom. My, my whole point is there's almost no freedom at all here, right? We're, just, we're constrained by our rules, even at three point, so there's not much we can write down. Things get a little bit more interesting when we allow, um, two fermions and a glue, or a vector, sorry. I'm prejudicing myself, right? But again, 
it pretty much writes itself from the rules. What do I need here? I need a polarization. And so I guess I'm calling this C, A, B, C. So I need some, I need some uh, EC mu, right? And, uh, and what do I need for this? I need the fermion bilinear. And I, well, I need, I need this guy to be able to speak to something, right? Right? And I've got my Lorentz invariant. Yeah, I mean, so, so good. Good, so, so what, what, awesome. So you'd like me to do also something like, huh? Pardon me? Yeah. Okay, good. Let's go before. Hmm? Some, so why don't we have some like case slash in here? Yeah. Okay. What it homework? Okay. All right. <laughs> yeah. Give me, give me, give me the theory. Okay. Hmm? Yeah. M. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Um. Okay, before, before I go on to my favorite thing, let me just make sure, where, how, how am I for time? Okay, good. So, let's do a scalar with a glue, or a vector. Oh, okay. Yeah, I, so I didn't I didn't mention I didn't mention color here, right? So so if I wanted QCD, right? So if I wanted QCD, I need something like you know right. Right, assigning colors. Yeah. What if I wanted Q, what if I wanted QED? What would I do? What would I do differently to go from QCD to QED? Yeah, I trivialize this. Give it give it the you know the coupling constant the charge, right? That's so I don't touch this. I touch this to go from QCD to QED. I touch this. I just touch the color factor. Okay. Everything, everything is massless right now. So you, so, 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 things don't get too much more interesting if you allow mass, right? You have some things that are non-vanishing with gammas, right? Or you're just multiplying by numbers. So okay, so what's a, what's what's the what's the most boring way to get higher derivative operators from three-point interactions when you've got a mass scale? I mean, when you've got like math, when you've got massive particles, you can always chart multiplying and dividing by mass in your mass scale, right? That's not that. So, so that's one way of sprinkling derivatives, right? It turns out because of scalar kinematics, you don't have that much more to play with to go between mass dimension, right? So the number of higher derivative operators at three points is fairly limited, okay? And, and it's because, I mean, scalar kinematics is just zots it out. It's just, you don't, you don't see anything more interesting. All right, let's, I'm so close to talking about glue, interacting with itself. I, I, uh, but let's, let's first, let's, 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 have, let's have our scalar talking to a vector, okay? So what can we write down? So, 
again, right? This guy needs to speak to somebody, right? Can this guy speak to this momentum? No, it can only speak to either of these momenta, right? But because of conservation momenta, speaking to one is as good as speaking to the other, right? Oh, sorry, I A, B, A, B, yeah? Why, why is come, oh. Sorry if this is really obvious, but what do you mean it needs to speak to something? Oh, so I, I'm insisting that I'm talking about Lorentz invariant theories. So if I'm gonna write down a Lorentz vector, I need it to dot with something else. So I need some other Lorentz vector to contract it with. Right, so I'm writing down the rents invariance. And I can't have it speak to itself, right? So I can't have it speak to the addition of A and B, and otherwise, one's as good as the other, right? So if I was writing down, and let me just make this point. So if I was, well, I'll make this point a little stronger when we, when we, go, after, when we go after the three gluon interaction, okay? But anyway, so this is, this is the only numerator I can write down for massless scalars interacting with the glue. There's nothing else I can write down. According to the rules that I set up, you know, I can change the coupling in front and I can change the color weight, right? So I could give it some arbitrary representation like this. I could make it adjoint if I want, or I could trivialize it, right? And be talking about something like scalar QED. Right? Are, are people with me with the, with the color weight? The, you know, I, need so, I need something to be tracking this interaction. Right? When you change the color weight, you are, in, in the physical sense, in the physical picture, you're actually just sort of changing part of the theory. Yeah, I'm talk, I, yeah, I'm changing the theory that I'm talking about. That's right. Okay. And then you only have like, what, three offs, I guess? Yeah. Okay. Is there, so you'd have to be some exotic particle to be in some rep that isn't one of the three we always have. Well, so so what what representations do you think of? Just so we're on the same page. Fundamentals, all sort of fundamental adjoint, and then just like transforming, like. Oh, good. Yeah, I mean, so 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 that's right. So so I'm I'm and I I'm good. Yeah, I'm I'm actively trying to leave this as arbitrary as possible. Yeah. Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Good. Yes. Uh huh. Why do we have it? Well. Right, and and so I mean and okay so so let let me let me point out let me point out a feature of E C dot K C being zero. This just means that E C dot K A equals E C negative E C dot KB. So I've just written the same thing down twice. Okay, but I've written it down in a way that's very pleasing to me because I like I like when I can make certain anti-symmetry manifest when I need it. Okay. No, no, no. You don't. You don't necessarily need anything, right? Um, what I like is, well, so that's right. So, so if, if this guy, for what, if this was an arbitrary representation, right, which could be adjoint, if this guy has symmetry properties between A and B, then I want this to be able to make, to make it manifest. But if not, I don't care, okay? Um, yeah. 
Good. I th oh, good. Mm -hmm. Oh, good. So, <coughs> um, good. So you want you want to write down something for the for this guy. So you want to write down something that's like. Um, epsilon C dot K A minus K B. Something like this. I don't know. I haven't thought about it. Let me think about it. OK? I like it. Um, it, it would. It definitely has more derivatives. Yeah? Right? But I, I, haven't, I haven't said that we're limiting ourselves to dimension. In fact, I'm happy for us to write down everything we can that's interesting. OK? Is that good? <laughs> no. <laughs> okay. Good. L let me get to Gluon. Oh, you're. <laughs> one question. These, these do have flavor indices or something, right? Mm -hmm. so we could just probably put a PL plus PR in the middle and the masslessness would knock it. Mm -hmm. So these have some flavor indices in some sense, right? Yeah. Okay. All right. So. This, this is going to be the first time that it's a little tricky to just write things. So I've got 15 minutes. I think I can do this in 15 minutes. All right. This is going to be the first time we're going to be calculating much like we calculate a loop level in that I'm going to give an ansatz for this guy, and I'm going to impose properties, and then we'll land on the answer. OK? Um, and the reason, OK, so what do, we, what do we know it needs? I'm just going to call it 1, 2, 3, because I'm going to get confused if I write things in terms of ABCs all the time. But I'll give this guy an A, this guy a B, and this guy a C. Uh, so we know we're going to need an epsilon 1, an epsilon 2, and an epsilon 3 showing up in every term we write down, right? Um, We know that we need at least one momenta to show up. So the minimum is we can't write down anything that has just one dot product with these three vectors right? in every term. right? So I could write down something like epsilon 1 dot epsilon 2, but then I need an epsilon 3 dotted with something. All right, so that's going to be some momenta. Okay. And similarly, similarly for the other guys. Can I do a Levi Civita in other dimensions? Um, I'm not. I'm not sure what that means. Oh, can I can I use an anti-symmetric tensor to to start combining these guys? Yeah, yeah, you can. Yeah. But but I'm I'm gonna proceed I'm gonna proceed more more pedestrian, right? Which is which is to write down the building blocks we can use and then just combine them and then see what happens. Okay. All right. So so what building blocks do I have? Right, so I've got these three. What? 
You have a question? Oh. This A is this A, this J bar is this J bar, and this I is this I. And epsilon three, thank you. Yeah, are we, are we? Good, no, sorry about that. Um, yeah, I, I guess I could have clarified things by turning that A into a C, but. <laughs> I think, I, think, I think we're good. All right, so we've got these, these building blocks are just tensors dotted with each other. I'm going to write down, um, so I could, I could sit here writing down, um, you know, things that vanish, like epsilon one dot k one, but I'm not going to, okay? So epsilon one dot k two, epsilon one dot k three, and epsilon two dot k one. So why can't we just straight away write k two minus? Exactly. Good. Good. All right. So yeah. So I was trying. I was trying to go a little slow, but maybe maybe this is too slow for people. No. no. Okay. <laughs> Okay, good. So, yeah. Let me just finish. Let me just finish writing things down. Epsilon two dot k three and epsilon three dot k one, epsilon three dot k two. Okay. Now, as was immediately pointed out because of conservation of momentum. If I include this in my basis of building blocks, am I adding anything? Or is this the same as this under conservation of momentum? You know, maybe a minus sign, right? Okay, so I'm just gonna, yeah? Okay, now. I, the same thing here, right? Because, because K2, I can write as, you know, minus K3 minus K1, right? So again, okay, so not, not too many building blocks I have to worry about. Now, what don't I get to write down? I don't get to write down any Ks dotted with Ks, right? So I'm almost done. I'm, li I'm literally almost done driving the glue on kinematic factor, all right? So this numerator has to go something like epsilon one dot epsilon two, and now I need an epsilon three. There's only one available to use, right? And so epsilon two dot epsilon three. Now I need an epsilon one, but there's only one I can use. And Epsilon one, two, three dot epsilon one, and now I need an epsilon two, and there's only one. Okay. Now, um, I don't know. I don't know what their relative weight should be, right? So I'm going to give an arbitrary parameter to them, right? Plus, plus, okay? But I do know, because I said I was talking about gluons, that my color weight's gonna be an FABC, okay? And so what's my color weight gonna do? 
it's going to be symmetric under cyclic permutations and antisymmetric under exchanges. So if I swapped these two, I'd pick up a minus sign. And for my amplitude to not vanish, right, the kinematic weight has to also pick up a minus sign when I swap them. OK? Are people, people on board? This fixes the coefficients uniquely, right? Um, uh, and so what's one way? One way, so uniquely up to the coupling constant, right? Up, up to an overall coupling constant, right? Which I can't fix via principles of like, you know, little group scaling and mass dimension, right? Right, but the structure, the kinematic structure is gonna be completely constrained. Once I go through and say, if this is, if this is N one, two, three is this, right? Then the constraint I'm going to apply, let me just take this over. The constraint I'm going to apply is that n123 equals negative n213. OK, that if I exchange, if I exchange legs 1 and 2, my color weight will pick up a minus sign. If I exchange legs 1 and 2, my kinematic weight will pick up a minus sign. OK? Are, are people happy with? with what I'm doing, what I'm doing to constrain the guess I've given. I'm giving a guess, right, for what I could possibly write down. Now I'm constraining it so that it's not zero, right? Because if I had something that was, you know, something anti-symmetric with something symmetric, I'd get zero, right? So I need something anti-symmetric here, right? But it's going to be anti-symmetric because of kinematics, not because of color. All right. Are, are people? It, pl please let me know if, if there are any questions about. Yes. Uh, so so it's anti-symmetric because of kinematics, not because of color. But then we also have a kinematic color duality. It is anti-symmetric in duality. <laughs> the kinematics are anti. They satisfy the same algebraic properties as the color weights. Thanks. Right, and so. At this, right here, it's the only thing to play with is anti-symmetry or symmetry, right? As we get to higher multiplicity, there are more interesting sort of algebraic structures we can establish, like adjoint stuff of bayes jacobi relations. That's going to be a constraint we can apply. Um, good. So, so who, do, do people want to see me? Do people want to see me actually like plug in and, and solve for... Nobody wants to see that. Okay, good. All right, so let me let me short circuit it, and and write down. So let's just make the anti-symmetry manifest because we know that's what we're doing, All right? So what? All right, so I'll pull out my overall coupling in front, and I'll say epsilon one dot epsilon two, epsilon three dot, um, let's say, I don't know, k1 minus k2, right? Which is the same thing as we discussed earlier, right? Epsilon 2 dot epsilon 3, um, epsilon 1 dot uh, k2 minus k3. Epsilon three, epsilon one, epsilon two dot k three minus k one. Okay. Let's see. One, two, three, two, three, one, 
three, one, two, one, two, three, two, three, one. I think I've maintained cyclicity, right? And I think, I think we've got anti-symmetry. So let's check. So if I swap one and two here, I definitely pick up a minus sign. So this guy's okay. Okay? So let's swap one and two here. So one and two is moving these guys around. Right? Yeah? It's, it's sort of exchanging these guys. Right? But the one's over here with a minus sign, the two's over here with a plus. So I'm good. I've got my minus sign. Yeah? So this guy's anti-symmetric under exchange of one and two. And it's because it's cyclically symmetric, it's antisymmetric under two and three and blah, blah, blah. So I'm done. This is it. This is the right answer. Okay? And this is what you get from literally your, you know, you trace F squared. Right? And you expand it out in terms of, you know, your D's and your A's. Right? And you've got your, your, you know, A, A, D, A. Right? Term. Right? A, A, D. Right? But is this the only thing I could have written? Oh, wait. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, 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 when you impose antisymmetry in all different legs, or antisymmetry and cyclicity, or but so, so what you know. So after you impose all the symmetry relations, those two alphas get you know all three alphas get reduced to one alpha. All right. Um, is this the only thing I could have written down? So this is, this is the only thing I could have written down with two dots. Okay, and I couldn't write down anything with one dot. Is there anything I can write down with three dots? Well, let's just talk in terms of dots. Well, I need three polarizations per term, and I've got three, right? So the question is, the question is, can I also have a higher derivative operator that has three vectors interacting that looks like Right, whose kinematic weight is like this, right? And the answer is yes. This is actually anti-symmetric for the same reasons, right? So I can expand it out in the same way. So it is anti-symmetric, all right? And it works. And this is trace F cubed, the three-point interaction for trace F cubed, okay? But then there's no further, there's nowhere else to go, right? Because I, don't I can't go higher in mass dimension at three points, because my k's are massless. right? And so I've exhausted what I can write down for three-point interactions with boulons. All right? Now, sorry, what we haven't checked is that this is gauge invariant. OK? How do we check if it's gauge invariant? Well, you, you, you see if it satisfies the Ward identity, right? So, so what you want is your amplitude, which in this case is n times c, your numerator times your color factor, right? But since there's only one, you know, there's only one graph, I can just look at the numerator factor. I want to see that the numerator factor for any ei replaced with its momentum has to be zero. Right, this is the word identity for gauge invariance. Yeah? Okay. And this is fortunately, fortunately is gauge invariant. Right? Because we're out of parameters. The only other parameter we can do is set this guy to zero. Right? And uh, and similarly for here. Right? It's kind of trivially true, right? For three point on shell kinematics, but it's true. Yeah? This will be this will be an important thing to impose at higher multiplicity or at loop level. Um, 
it turns out that, that for Yang Mills, for this mass dimension, for Yang Mills, so this is Yang Mills, for Yang Mills, factorization and color kinematics um, is, uh, is one to one with imposing gauge invariance. And so you will see gauge invariant stuff showing up after you've imposed, after you've imposed this duality between color kinematics and, uh, and factorization to the correct lower point amplitudes. Um, but we'll see that next time. So I think we're out of time.